She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her She's a Mona Lisa Right, so hello, my name is Jay Charles. Today I'm doing a video on everything I do a night before a shoot. This is gonna be a pretty in-depth self-care video. It's not gonna be everything I do in terms of self-care, but it is pretty much everything I do before a photo shoot, just to get ready, look good, be professional. And even if you're not a model, this will give you tips on self-care, grooming, and just generally being the best version of yourself. And yeah, just being professional no matter where you work. Okay, so one of the first things I think I should talk about is probably clothes, even though I'm you know, not wearing any. Modeling nowadays is way deeper than, oh, she's pretty. It's even deeper than like, she's professional. Clients book you for two reasons. One, yes, professionalism. They want someone who's gonna look the best and give the best results, right? But the second reason is because they like you. Like, I mean, they could book any model in the world, right? So. When they book a model, I think there's something special about that model. They don't just book you from your portfolio, they look at your Instagram, and this is with other jobs too. They do look at your social media, even though, you know. I'm sure they're not supposed to. I feel like clients have seen me online, they've probably seen my personality a bit and seen what I do. And yeah, I think it's good to kind of bring a little bit of, you know, that vibe to the shoot. I think that's why your personal brand is so important to just set you apart and make people know exactly what you're about. Regardless of whatever industry you're in, I mean, even especially for me, I mean, I could technically just show up to work, you know, looking raggedy and nasty. Because yes, there is a makeup artist there and there are clothes there and you know, they're gonna make me look nice regardless. I know that I will deliver those pictures, but I also wanna make sure I go to set looking like me. First impressions really count. Now I've been asked to wear all black. Now I'm not gonna show up to work in a black shirt and black trousers or something because I will look like I, you know, work at Primark. I'm gonna wear a tank top and some nice flared trousers. But obviously, you know, there's a tank top and trousers and then a tank top and trousers. I kind of have little bits that I'll go to so I use for castings and jobs and stuff. But I always try on everything together before the actual day because I wanna make sure it looks all good. I think the fit is everything when it comes to your outfit. Even if it's something so simple as a tank top and jeans, it is just, if it fits you well, it's gonna look amazing. If it doesn't fit you well, it can make you look fat. When I was bigger, I would always be that girl wearing like two sizes too small and trying to squeeze and thinking that it makes me look slimmer when actually does the exact opposite. Everything I wear, I will link in the description box, but I'm wearing these Nike trainers. I do wear like heeled boots, so a lot of castings that I go to, but I feel like it's kind of cool to wear trainers as well. So I'm gonna wear this crop top from Pull and Bear and then these trousers that I got from Mango. It kind of just shows off my personal style a little bit without going like, you know, overboard. Okay, so let's talk about the body. There are two things that I'm thinking of at first. Number one is that my skin is nice and clear. Legs look good, sleek, well moisturized for the camera because obviously it's hard to edit out, you know, ashy knees. But also the second thing is kind of, again, personal branding and just general presentation on set. I am a naturally hairy person. So I shave the night before every job. Even if I was gonna be covered head to toe, always I shave. I'm most likely gonna be changing in front of someone, whether it is the stylist, the designer, maybe other models. The last thing I wanna do is make them feel uncomfortable because my bikini line is looking wild. I don't wax because it's not practical for me. For my work, I pretty much need to always, always be bold. Bold everywhere except for my head, my eyebrows and my lashes at all times. I used the laser, which was perfect. I mean, it was actually, yeah, probably the best thing I did, but I was, you know, lazy with it and it. So yeah, my advice is to laser, um, don't be lazy with it, you know, keep on top of your hot chops or else it's just a waste of money down the drain. I will start laser soon though, but right now I shave. When it comes to shaving, it is all in the technique. If you don't do every step correctly, you will have an ugly bikini line. I know this from experience. I used to dry shave my bikini line, not use shaving cream, use these like cheap one pound razors. The ingrowns, the razor bumps were just, they were bad. Always use shaving cream, make sure the blazers, I think I have mine. This is the one that I use, it's called the Gillette Pro Fusion. And then I have this little, packet of them and then I basically just clip that in and then I have the next razor. So it's a five bladed razor and it just 
makes my skin nice and smooth. I'm gonna use that in the bath later tonight. So I use my razor a couple times and then throw it out as soon as it gets blunt. You should not be using the same razor for months at a time. You must, 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 must use shaving cream. The shaving cream softens your hair so that when you cut it, it just slides right off. And you especially need it for places where you have thicker hair. I really, really avoid going over the same spot over and over again because that is going to cause irritation as well. And then I exfoliate about maybe four times a week. It helps to get rid of like the dead skin cells and just renew your skin, make sure it's nice and clean. I don't do it on the actual days that I shave because obviously like my vagina might explode. I use... This is the exfoliator that I use. So it's called the Clearly Corrective Brightening and Exfoliating Cleanser. And I use this on my body. Well, on sensitive parts. I'll show you on the screen which one I use for my like legs, arms, you know, like normal parts of my body. Sometimes I use this exfoliating mitt, maybe like mm, a couple times a week. It's like a little mitten and I kind of just... Ch -ch -ch -ch. A lot of places online tell you that you should shave less if you get like, you know, irritation from shaving. But actually, for me, I shave pretty regularly and when I shave, it kind of just stops the hair from growing and kind of poking back at my skin. So yeah, if you feel like you have a lot of problems with any like, you know, itching, then definitely try, try shaving a bit more often. Obviously for me, I have to for my job, so I don't know if everyone's gonna be bothered to shave, you know, I don't know, every few days or whatever, or every other day, but I mean, I do. I always moisturize afterwards. Tonight I'll probably use a really light moisturizer because I don't like getting in bed with like a heavy kind of thick cream on my skin. In the morning I'll probably use a more heavy duty moisturizer. And yeah, I mean the makeup artist will probably have a moisturizer there as well. I do also bring one in my bag just in case. And that's just in case, you know, the makeup artist doesn't have any moisturizer. Some makeup artists are definitely more prepared than others. I mean, some people don't even moisturize at all, to be fair, so that's probably why some makeup artists won't have moisturizer. I will never forget one day going over to a friend's house and in the morning I started, you know, creaming my body, I brought some cream with me and she asked me, oh, As well as my mini moisturizer, I like to pack a little Carmex just in case my lips get dry because whew, editing out dry lips is not easy. I also like to pack some food as well. So tomorrow I start at 10 a.m., which means that there probably is not gonna be any breakfast. I would assume that there's breakfast if we have a start before nine. After nine, mm, it's like a, a toss up, we don't know. There will be food for lunch for sure, but the likelihood that I will be hungry before that is very, very high. I'm someone who I need the energy throughout the day. I have to eat throughout the day, earlier in the day as I'm working or else I get hangry. And no one, absolutely no one wants to work with a hangry model. Even though I'm gonna have my breakfast in the morning, I'm not really 100% sure that I will be able to last until 1 p.m. at lunch. So I'm gonna pack some food like that I know is not gonna like interrupt if say I'm you know on my feet like constantly throughout the morning, then it's something that I can just quickly waffle down. So I'm gonna pack a deliciously Ella bar. They're really, really good and they're super filling. Okay, so let's talk about my face skin. Just like the body, I want clear, smooth skin. Just to make sure like there's nothing distracting going on on my face, you know, on the camera. And then also just to help out the makeup artist as well. Because if my skin is flaky and dry, the makeup is not gonna look good. If my skin is looking, you know, well moisturized, good before I even start, then it just makes the makeup artist's life easier. It makes the photographer's life easier if they don't have to edit bad skin when it, you know, can be avoided. So I use the Clinique Take the Day Off and what I do is take some of the cleansing balm inside and just really kind of melt it down in my fingers. And then as it melts down in my fingers, I put it all around my skin and it just breaks down all of the makeup from the night before. And then I splash my face and it kind of emulsifies, rub a bit more, and then I just wash it off and yeah, the makeup just goes down the drain. It's really important to get every single bit of makeup off because number one, with a lot of the shoots that I do, I can wear a lot of makeup. And number two, my skin is sensitive. I do have acne prone skin. So if I don't take it off, I, I'm i like about 80% sure that I will get some sort of a spot 
if I don't take off my makeup the night before. And I use that same exfoliator as before the Kiehl's one. Most of the makeup removers I have used have either been way, way too harsh or they just haven't really gotten the job done. And this has literally maybe like five ingredients, really, really easy to use and gets the job done. And again, exfoliating my skin just helps to kind of rejuvenate my skin and get rid of the, you know, dead skin cells and just help new fresh skin to come out. I also want to say if anyone is watching this video and you have acne or you have bad skin and you think, oh my God, these acne scars are never ever going to go away and they're with me for life, they will go away. I used to have really bad acne scars on both cheeks and I don't have them anymore. Trust me, yours is gonna go away as well. As long as you take care of your skin, moisturize, exfoliate, not too often though, because you know, you don't wanna go crazy. Just a gentle exfoliation a couple times a week. Whether it's chemical exfoliation, physical exfoliation, whatever works best for your skin. I talk a lot more about how I cured my acne in my video, Six Ways to Grow Up Like a Model. If you do have acne or you do have spots or anything or just want to have clear skin, definitely watch that video. Having bad skin, especially as a model, was so hard for me. Particularly if you're doing like beauty shoots because the camera just gets everything. I'm talking everything. Things that you cannot see with your own eyes. And then it just magnetizes it. And I know a lot of people think, oh, they can just retouch it, but it's, it's not really like that. I think maybe for celebs or influencers, yes. But as a model, the last thing you're thinking is, oh yes, they're gonna retouch that. Like that's not, that's not in your mind. Especially when you work with so many different people. I mean, different people have different styles of photography. So some people will not retouch a thing. And also, I guess these days, specifically with beauty brands, I think they're not allowed to retouch their stuff anymore. They don't really seem to do that anymore. So they really want to show what the product really looks like. So if I were to show up and then I have, you know, crusty lips and, you know, bad skin, then yeah, I have a giant billboard of me with crusty lips and bad skin. And I don't think they're retouching it. I highly recommend this moisturizer. It's the Kiehl's skin rescuer. If you have combination or oily skin, this is perfect because it moisturizes your skin without making it like super, super oily. And then if you have dry skin, then this is amazing. This one just leaves your skin looking nice and dewy and fresh and just gorgeous. It's just juicy and strangely, it feels like a very light consistency. Oh, but before moisturizing, I didn't even mention, wait, let me show you. So before moisturizing, I also like to use one of these. I use this for my eyebrows and also for a bit of sideburns because I do have some sideburns that I like to just off a bit. As well as that, I also use this brow gel. It is the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Fix. So it's the clear gel. They also have a really, really nice kind of um, tinted gel one. And the brush is gorgeous, like really, really defined, really tiny and just gets every little hair. Brows are just everything. They're so important because they like to shape your face. As long as I have my brow shaped, my skin clear, my lips nice and moisturized, and my hair nice and clean, then everything else just kind of falls into place. That's kind of a model secret to always looking good without makeup. For hair, it really depends on how I'm feeling. I usually either wear a sew-in or a wig, like something long, just to kind of make sure that people don't ruin my own hair. I would rather a stranger straighten my wig than actually straighten my real hair and perm my hair off. I have seen it happen, guys, and yeah, I'm not trying to risk it. But obviously it depends on the client, it depends on what the client wants. Most clients are fine with me coming with a weave or a wig. Nowadays, my agent always, always, always asks me how I'm gonna come with my hair. They always ask the client what they prefer my hair to be like. They send the client pictures of my Polaroids with my weave and my Polaroids with my natural hair. And then from there, the client can kind of choose whatever works best. Obviously, if I'm doing a hair shoot, then I usually would come with my natural hair. And even with the weaves and wigs, I do even think about that. So for example, if I'm doing a beauty shoot and we're doing all lots of eyes and brows and all of, you know, this kind of area, I'm not gonna show up with a full fringe wig. However, if I'm doing a fashion shoot and I know that this brand is super edgy, then yeah, a full fringe wig is gonna be perfect. Either way, I like to make sure my hair is nice and clean, hence the uh, towel on my head right now. I will wash my wig for tomorrow as well, just to make sure it's nice and clean. Two reasons, again, because personal hygiene and I don't want, you know, the makeup artist to feel weird because she has her hands and greasy, nasty, you know, hair. Nails, now annoyingly, I'm not really supposed to be getting acrylics because on set, you never know what kind of thing they want to do with my nails. 
And honestly, the quickest way to get bad feedback is to show up with shellac. Like if I show up with red shellac on my nails, that's an absolute no because number one, they can't take it off. And for the shoot, it might not go with what they are looking for. So I used to come with my nails completely bare, but I feel like these days nails are so popular. Nowadays, clients will say that you can have polished nails before it used to be nothing on the nails. So I always come with nude nail polish because I don't know when they're bare, they just look bold, ugly. And you know, when my nails have a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a glow, it just looks nice. I wear press-on nails quite a lot. I love to order from Lossy Nails because they just have really cute designs. And then I can wear something quite trendy when I want to and then kind of take them off when I need to go to work. Okay, so let's talk sleep because honestly, I feel like it is the most underrated thing in the world. There is no celebrity makeup artist. There is not enough concealer in the world to cover these bags when I haven't had a good night's sleep. And it's not even just that. I mean, I work out, right? And obviously for workouts to be affected, you need to be recovering properly. And if you're not sleeping properly, then you're not recovering. To build any muscle, to tone up any part of your body, you need the workout, the protein, and the recovery. It's those three that make the equation. And speaking of working out, although I personally don't work out in the night, I always work out in the morning. I do like to stretch at night. Tomorrow I'm gonna be on my feet all day and I do get some back pain. So I just wanna make sure that, my, you know, I'm stretching. When I do stretches and yoga, it helps my back pain so much. It's probably the number one healer of my back pain, other than, you know, like taking an ibuprofen, but that's kind of like a temporary thing. And stretching and doing certain types of workouts are a long-term thing that's gonna help with back pain or any kind of pain in your body. I haven't done any stretching kind of videos yet, but if you would like to do one with me, then let me know and I will do a stretching video. Journaling, wait, let me get my journal. This is my journal. It's very like vintage and my kind of style. I use this journal for my gratitude list, for my affirmations, and then also everything that I know I've done tonight for tomorrow and everything that I know that needs to be done tomorrow. Without writing it down in this book, it's like jumbled up in my brain and I can't sleep. Like I will wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh my God, what else, what, did I do this? Did, did I? And that's gonna ruin my sleep. Journaling in general is just so important to me. It just makes me, it makes me understand what I'm doing. It grounds me. Writing it down, it's like a release for me. It's like, I have done this today and I just feel grateful. I write down everything I've done in the day and I just feel grateful that I was able to do that. Grateful to myself for doing that for me. So those are all the things I do the night before a shoot. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. She's a Mona Lisa.